welcome back to our look at uh, the assumptions of the behaviourist approach. Um, in our last video we looked at classical conditioning, so you'll probably remember, well I certainly hope you will remember, terms like unconditioned stimulus, conditioned stimulus, um, how would a neutral um, stimulus become a conditioned stimulus? Make sure you revise all those. We can have a quiz soon where you really, really need to know those, not to mention the exam, of course. Okay, so um, another form of conditioning that, that behaviourists believe, um, believe explains learning very well is known as operant conditioning. And so in this lesson, we need to understand the principles of operant conditioning, um, how this uh, explains learning in humans and non-human animals. Um, and by the end of the if not by the end of the lesson, certainly by the end of the day. Um, you should have completed up to the end of page six of your handout and uh, copied all of that material into your electronic exercise book. Okay, so print conditioning is, um, is this idea of learning through consequence. And you have come across consequences a lot in um, behavior policies in schools in other in other things that you've heard of. And a, a consequence simply means what follows on from an action. Um, if you uh, if you mess around in class, for example, not that any of my students in the sixth form do, but if, you know, you might think back to people who messed around in class, maybe in a, a, an earlier year group, um, the result of that might be that they get a detention. So the thing that follows on from a behaviour is known as a consequence. And um, this, this assumption focuses on the two major types of consequence we get. We can either get rewarded for a, a behaviour or punished for a behaviour. Um, behaviourists always avoid using the word reward from now on, and the technical term is reinforcement. We'll see more about that. Uh, okay, so have you been, you know, you might think, have you actually been rewarded or punished this week in any way? Um, in the handout, can you look at the description of the four types of operant conditioning and come up with your own example for each one? Can you make sure um, that you do that and post it into your exercise book and then I can read them and check that, you, that you're absolutely clear that you understand all of those, okay? If you do find it a bit, a bit tricky, just remember the following. Just remember that reinforcement is designed to increase behaviour. So anything that increases the behaviour is a reinforcement. Uh, anything that decreases behaviour is a punishment positive is, is where a stimulus is added um, and a negative uh, thing is where something is taken away. So using those four ideas should help you uh, steer your way through those uh, four technical terms. And it's really important that you've got good clear examples for each. Okay, so this theory was come up by a guy called uh, B.F. Skinner, who as well as being an amazing uh, psychologist, he's also a good writer, he's written a good a novel based on a behaviorist um, world uh, called Walden 2. Really recommend it. It's a good read. Um, but he, he also used to like inventing things. And he invented this box to test out his theory of operant conditioning. So if you look at the box, it's um, it's, got the, it's got those things in it. It's got um, a loudspeaker and lights um, and an electrified floor which uh, all of which could act as stimuli for the um, for the rat which is in there there's a response lever and a food dispenser so a way of getting out food sorry i better go back um, so the rat wanders around in the in the skinner box accidentally presses the lever and gets some food as a result um, that's going to make the, the rat more likely to re um, to repeat the behavior of pressing the lever so that so the food would act as a reinforcer but if the rat pressed the uh, the uh, response lever and got an electric shock from the floor then it would be less likely to do that and in that case the electrified grid would be acting as uh, a punishment okay so uh, Skinner did lots and lots of experiments with different animals mostly pigeons and rats uh, using uh, using the, the famous Skinner box and come up with some amazing stuff. So, for example, um, I can't actually show you these. Um, you need to, I'll, I'll post the uh, PowerPoint on Classroom and you need to look these up. These are really interesting as well. They're very short, they're only about two minutes each. But um, it looks like pigeons can read, it looks like pigeons, and pigeons were trained to actually play ping pong against each other by using uh, 
reinforcement. Okay. Your next task is to have a look at these four things here. You can pause the video if you want to write those down. Um, and then identify. Um, yeah, come in. Um, so you've got the, uh, so identify which types of reinforcement are going on here and write them in your handout. Um, and then you might want to think of a way that you've been rewarded or punished. So think about um, uh, reinforcements and punishments that take place at school, at home, or generally in society. Yeah, you know, we're punished for doing things um, wrong in social, in Yeah, so as we were saying, um, think about the ways that we could be uh, rewarded or punished at home, at school, or in society generally. Explain how those uh, explain how those rewards or punishments are dis designed to uh, alter your behaviour, and ask yourself how successful is this? Is that a really good way of teaching people to do things? Okay, this is also um, this is a quick. Re review video that you can get if you if you look at this powerpoint um, on a classroom and uh, it really spells out the difference between operant and classical conditioning which is again this is really important for uh, the quiz that we'll be doing and for your um, and for your exam obviously okay nice speaking to you i'll see you at the next video